Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I got a really cool video for you on how you can use uh, some of the, or one of the new uh, OpenAI operators for Airflow to actually create a document parsing pipeline. Uh, so this pipeline will take uh, some raw unstructured stock uh, news information for a given ticker when we trigger it. And you can see if I go to trigger the DAG, see it'll, uh, ask me for a stock ticker. And then what it'll do is read all the information from 10K reports published by that company uh, over you know the past few quarters, summarize that information uh, to give me a state of, hey, what is going on with this company? Um, so why I said you know, one of the new providers is because this actually will work with any of the new uh, Airflow providers. Um, you can see kind of the different uh, setups here. Um, obviously there are some differences and so I'll go into each of these separately in their own video because I think they all deserve their own video because they all dictate their own approaches. Um, so today we're going to start off with looking at the OpenAI version of this. So let's kick it over into VS Code and we'll get into the nitty-gritty of how to build this. So here I am my local Airflow environment um, and so just to call attention to what you'll need for this. So for this particular one you'll need the OpenAI provider and then also Langchain and VS4 for some of the utilities there. Um, and then just make sure you're always on the latest version of Airflow. Um, and this is, you know, also spinning up a WeBA environment alongside of it. I'll drop the link to this repository in, uh, below in the description if you want to check out <clears throat> any of these different DAGs right now to get started. Maybe you're really chomping at the bit. Um, but now I want to show you kind of how to build a pipeline that, you know, will take this raw data and use the power of these LLMs to actually generate meaningful insights out of it. So instead of you know, your analyst needing to read through all that documentation, needing to read through all the historical information about a company. They can have a data pipeline, do most of the heavy lifting, read the high level 10,000 foot view at, that it spits out, uh, and then use that to make their insights. Obviously, you know, there is always the advantages of, you know, diving into the data yourself, but when you're trying to process and, you know, analyze lots and lots of different companies at once or lots of different data points um, that are unstructured, you just don't have the time to do that much reading. Right. And so that's where the ability of these LM platforms to vectorize, you know, condense that information, uh, parse it for you, essentially acting as a second brain and then giving you those insights um, out of there. So what we're going to need to uh, import uh, from future annotations, this is just a you know, feature that allows us to annotate the DAG. Uh, we're going to import the DAG decorators, DAG and task, airflow exception. Um, and this will just say, hey, allow us to do more defined failure rules here. Um, parameter, this will allow us to pass that ticker in at runtime. Um, and then the OpenAI hook is part of that new OpenAI provider package that I mentioned earlier um, that will allow us to connect to OpenAI just using an OpenAI API key. And I'll show you, we'll set that up in the UI later. For now, we'll also need to import our good old BS4 beautiful soup. So this is a tool that can be used to parse unstructured data, in this case, text, um, to, you know, determine sentiment, to uh, clean the information from it. Uh, it's also used a lot for web scraping as well. Um, and then we also have Langchain, um, and this is a kind of an LLM companion tool that a lot makes it easier to split all your text into kind of manageable chunks. So, you know, Beautiful Soup can run in parallel uh, or can spit out its raw information. Langchain splits it up into different chunks um, of documents, and then you can feed that into OpenAI um, to actually process and glean information from that data after it's been kind of condensed and vectorized in a more efficient way. Then we're also going to import logging just so we can access the Airflow logging system, OpenAI client, uh, pandas, as and this is just, again, another way of interact with OpenAI. We also have pandas, uh, classic, uh, pathlib, again, just allowing us to uh, define a path to a particular file, um, and then import or requests, which will allow us to make API requests. Uh, Unicode data and UUID, these are just kind of utility functions um, for generating unique identifiers. So then, now we've got all of our imports done, we can define our important variables. So here at the top, we have uh, our OpenAI connection default, we have our logger, so this is just getting the logs for particular Airflow tasks, so we can read those and spit out information. Um, and then we have the Edgar eight, uh, headers. And all this means is uh, the Edgar is just the US Security and Exchange Commission's database for all historical information around uh, stocks. So that's what you're seeing with the Edgar headers there just to test email. Uh, and then we have our default arguments, trigger rule, retry, delay, all that good stuff. So then what we'll define, and now we've gotten all of our things out of the way, 
will define our DAG. And this is actually going to be an interesting DAG declaration because we're going to use a parameter here. So here we have our schedule interval, catch up, pause, font creation, default args, all the usual stuff. Um, but then we have this params field. And so what th this allows us to do is take in a variable at runtime, uh, like you saw again in the UI, and then use that as a variable within our DAG. So we can then pass that in dynamically to say, hey, look for this particular stock's data. Um, and so you define this by uh, ticker, it kind of JSON or JSON style formatting because that's essentially how it's being passed in. Um, and you'll see kind of the title, type, description, all that good stuff. Then define the name of our DAG. And so here the first function we're gonna define is removing HTML tables. Um, and what this will do is just remove all the unnecessary table tags from the raw uh, HTML content we're bringing in from that Edgar database. So you can see here, beautiful soup to scrape, um, all that text, find table, as you can see, soup instance of beautiful soup, find that table, replace it with nothing, um, and then smooth out all that text, use Unicode data to normalize it, and then just return some cleaned uh, document data. So that way we can just plug it in the model and it's super uh, easy for the downstream uh, open ILLM to actually use. Uh, then we also have a helper function, get HTML content for pandas. So here in this helper function, we're going to uh, request that get, so get all the headers from a document, if the content is okay, then content, uh, then, or if it's not okay, <laughs> then it's unsupported content type. Otherwise, uh, removing, it's going to remove that HTML tables if it is of that HTML content. So this is just basically saying, checking that we don't run, uh, or that we don't run our HTML stripper off of any uh, files that don't actually need it. And so then unable to get content, and this will just also stop us from getting any failures when we run into content that we can't parse. Um, so after we're done with that, we'll define our next function, which is going to be getting a 10 Q link. Um, and so here, what this is doing is just a function basically that is going to read through all these documents that we're going to get and get the link to the 10 Q filing. Um, so each of these data points that we're pulling from the editor database basically references an a external 10Q filing document. So that's the raw data that we actually want to get at. So you can see here it's reading that in, just defining a base link based on those variables. Um, you can see we're reading all these in at runtime. And then we have filing summary, get from a request.get. Uh, you can see headgers equals the Edgar head, he headers, which is why we defined those earlier. Um, and then for filing, that's summary.ok. Again, using beautiful soup to parse through this and find that uh, 10K link. And you can see it's gonna build ourselves a usable link um, by searching for it and finding it within the text. So now that we have a function to get our 10Q link from these documents, we're going to then also define a very long function that is going to allow us to actually extract the 10Q statements from these documents. So here, um, on this extract task, we have uh, this task is pulling 10Q statements from this database. And so basically just going through all those different tickers, and this is using all those previous functions that we defined to actually go through the list of those companies, find that or for the, our particular ticker. So find all the reports for our particular ticker. Um, if you can't find any, then you know just give us an error message and then perform a uh, request get method. So you can see this is actually side of, uh, so we're, wrapping all this information inside of a URL, and then uh, running through uh, our company facts, finding the 10Q reports, so you can see finding these. Um, and then if you couldn't find any company file information, surfacing that in the Airflow logs. And then for every form that we find using that 10Q link from each of these documents, uh, then this is going to pull out uh, all the information around that. You'll see it's going to also use a pandas data frame to read in those docs. Um, and then you'll see getting the HTML content, stripping out all that unnecessary information, dropping nulls, dropping duplicates, um, all extraneous information after we've extracted it and it's used our uh, different functions. So now that we've got extracted our kind of raw data, we're also going to need to split it up. Um, so like I said before, because you know we can't just feed a raw document into an LLM, you'll need to split it up into smaller chunks because, so the context doesn't get too big. Um, and you also don't want to feed it too much context at once. I, it, there's been a lot of kind of, I guess, research or commentary recently about the fact that you know when you reach a certain context um, with some of these chatbots, the performance just degrades significantly. So 
just interesting little tidbit there. But yeah, we're going to chunk the data here, um, concatenate multiple of data frames to each of those chunks uh, from upstream tasks. Um, and you can see just the headers are split on just to find the logic for how we're going to split our documents into different chunks. Uh, and you know you can go line by line here, but just chunk size 10,000 characters, uh, splitting them, and then just adding, creating a data frame of content, which is just a data frame of objects representing those doc ch document chunks. Yes, this is super fun uh, document chunking stuff. Um, and then once we are done with that, we're going to take those document chunks and we're going to vectorize them. So here uh, in our vectorized task, we're taking in those data frames, content column name, output file name, um, and that's just you know the file path we're going to upload it to. So here we have our, we're finally using our OpenAI hook. <laughs> and what we're going to do is uh, get for each of our content uh, ID chunks, right? We're going to take those in and then vectorize them. So we're going to store them in a data frame of vectors um, using the OpenAI hook to create embeddings out of that text using the text embedding uh, add a two mo O2 model um, and then saving that vectorized data frame to a parquet file because it is a just more efficient way of storing data. And LLMs love maximum efficiency in data storage. Uh, so now that we're done with that, we're done vectorizing it. We can actually use OpenAI to generate a summary. Um, so summarization of a single chunk of text. Uh, so here under chunk summarization OpenAI, this function is using you know GPT Turbo five. Uh, so use Ada to actually vectorize it. GPT five is the LLM that's, or chatbot that's actually going to summarize that and bring it into a human readable response. But you'll use a different model to actually vectorize the data um, to give it to that uh, GPT model. So now you have your summarizing your chunk, um, and this will uh, give a system message. So check complete, highly skilled AI trained in language comprehension summarization. I would like you to read this text. So here's where you're putting your prompt. Um, and so it's really important actually to have a good prompt wrapping around this content um, because if your prompt is bad, then it's going to give you either you know, really like high level, it's not maybe the insights that you're actually looking for at your data. So this is the part where you're really going to be tweaking it for your particular use case. You know, you could swap out this data, swap out really any of the rest of this pipeline for whatever you want, and then you just change the uh, role, the content within here to adjust it to whatever data you're ingesting in here. So I really want you to think of this kind of as, you know, a way of, hey, how do I use this in my own uh, scenario because that's you know I'm trying to get people to trying to show you real business applications of AI and, and a lot of these technologies because I think they really are there. Um, so you can see here, you know, after it's going to give us a uh, chat completion then response, and we're just going to serve that uh, as a return object out of this task. And then next, what we'll do is uh, create a uh, concatenation. And this is actually going to use GPT-4, you know, the extra horsepower, um, to summarize uh, all of the different uh, chunks. So you can see here for we're going to create chat completion and go through our uh, different content. And the reason why we're having multiple of these is so we're actually going to wrap them all into one large task. So we're going to summarize first individual chunks, and so we're going to summarize groupings of chunks, and then we're going to summarize the summaries of all of those different individual chunks. You can think of it almost like a pyramid tree of chunk summaries all leading towards the top, which is this one, um, summarize. And this is, again, using that OpenAI hook, getting the API key um, to give us a chunk summary of the content uh, for a particular ticker. Um, and, you know, just, again, using some of the same methodologies that we did before, saving a data, data frame, dropping any duplicates, um, all standard best practices. And so now, once we're done with defining all those fun, fun functions, what we'll also do is define these as tasks. So here we're actually using some crazy task definition method where we're taking a function, wrapping in this task, and then also passing a ticker equals ticker. This is another way that you can define or take Python functions and turn them into tasks. Uh, then we're also going to see this embeddings file. Uh, so we're going to create an embeddings file out of the vectorized chunks. Um, and that's what we're creating earlier when in that vectorized task, bringing in new parquet um, and you know all the different split documents there. Then finally, we have our different generated summary and summaries file. So we have a task that is actually going to generate a, a summary of all of our different vector embeddings. Um, 
for us. And then here, past that, we're just, you know, again, generating a summary, uh, saving that summaries file um, in Parquet, and then also creating this, uh, defining our DAG different here. So you, because we added that params, you also need to add, uh, just like if you define a function, you would have to define what fields are going to it. So ticker equals blank, and then that'll be overridden by whatever parameter we pass in at runtime. Um, so now we've got our DAG fully written. So it's finally time to go back over into the Airflow UI and uh, actually get it running. So we can do here, uh, it's back in Airflow UI. And the first thing you're gonna need to do actually before you get it running um, is create a connection ID open AI default. Um, I, it doesn't obfuscate my, actually, I think it does. Let me go back. I think it should obfuscate my open AI key. Otherwise I'll just delete this after showing you guys. Yeah, so open AI key uh, is saved here. So just that's all you need. Don't worry about host or description. Um, and then that's what this task uses. And so if you wanna run this on your own, but very much encourage you to. Um, it is it just takes a while, so that's why I kind of have a pre-run here. Um, so here you can see kind of the raw data files coming out of this Edgar's database, uh, then being split up. Uh, and you can see kind of here like the cleaner version of each of those documents saved um, in my logs file. Uh, then it'll save your final summaries vectorized into uh, that Parquet file in your local directory include. Um, so check those out there. The data dog is calling me, is scratching himself all over. So I'm going to, have to cut this video a little short, but really encourage you to go check this video out uh, or check this repo out for your own. Again, it'll be in the description um, and start using LLMs in an actual practical way. Um, so that's all I have for y'all today. Data guy out. Peace.